Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth and today we are going to be discussing on the topic simple classification of substances and we're going to be looking at separating mixtures. Previously we talked about separating liquid liquid mixtures and we looked at separating uh, miscible liquids where the two liquids are close but different boiling points and we said that we use fractional distillation. So today still we are going to talk about uh, separating liquid liquid mixtures but the method we are going to discuss today we need to extract the liquid that we are going to be separating and we are going to be using a solvent. So we are going to use an interesting method called sol solvent extraction. Uh, this method is very common in extracting oils. So we are going to be extracting some oil from nuts. And we are also going to look at some of the other ways that it can be applied in our daily life. And also we are going to look at one question uh, in regards to what we have discussed. So solvent extraction is a liquid-liquid extraction process. Uh, it allows the separation of uh, two or more components with unequal solubilities. So in this case, we are going to be separating oil from nuts, but we are going to use a solvent. This solvent is where the liquid-liquid mixture comes in. So the oil will mix with the solvent. It forms a liquid-liquid mixture. But we have to look for a way to get rid of the solvent and we're going to discuss how we are going to do that. So we will be separating those two liquids. Uh, but first we need to extract one of the liquids. So we can be left with what we want to get at the end of the day. So the solvent is also known as the extractant. Because it helps us to extract that specific component from a mixture. So we are going to mention different solvents that can be used for this mixture. And which solvents cannot be used. So for example, we are going to extract oil from ground nuts. So what is the procedure? This is a very common question. It is important for you to understand the procedure that you're going to use in the classroom or in the exam or in the lab. First, we crush the seeds in a mortar using a pestle. Make sure you are not confusing the two. The mortar is the one that we are placing the nuts in and then the pestle is the one that we are crushing with so we are crushing using the pestle we are placing in the mortar and note the uh, the the spelling of the pestle is also important and then after crushing as we continue crushing the nuts we are adding a solvent Remember, we, saw, we said that this is the cord extractant. In this case, we can use a solvent called propanol. Other solvents can be used, like ethanol. Ethanol can be used as an alternative, although we cannot use water as a solvent in this case. We will come to see why we cannot use water in this case. And then, remember, we have added the propanol in this uh crushing like as we continue crushing we are adding so we are forming a solution in the process so we decant that solution you need to mention this we decant it into an evaporating basin and then after doing that we are decanting so that we can remove those uh, big chunks of nuts that uh, have not been crushed completely and then we leave the solution so this is where the solution comes in the liquid liquid uh, mixture that we talked about. This is where it comes in. So that liquid liquid mixture is made up of the oil and of the solvent. So we are leaving it under the sun because we want it to do something to this mixture. So let's discuss what happens in this experiment. So the nuts are usually crushed first to increase the surface area for contact with the solvent. So we want small, small, small bits of nuts so that the oil in the nuts will react to the solvent to form that solution. 
it's not possible for this to happen or it might happen but the surface area is going to be so low meaning that the chunk of the nut is so big it can't come with the contact with the solvent so we crush it to make it smaller and then we use propanone as a solvent because it dissolves in oil it forms a miscible liquid and then water cannot be used because it will not dissolve the oil so this is the point we were discussing you cannot use water in this case because oil and water do not mix they are immiscible and we said we cannot use um, this method to separate um, immiscible liquids so when once the oil has dissolved in the propanone we said these are the two mixtures they are left under the sun or in the sun to evaporate the solvent. Why is it possible for it to evaporate? Because it has a lower boiling point. Oil has a higher boiling point. So it will take some time for it to completely evaporate in the atmosphere. But the solvent, which has a very low boiling point, will, will evaporate very quickly. And then if it evaporates, it leaves the oil on the evaporating dish. So oil that is obtained this way is not that pure because we know some of the solvent might not completely evaporate. So what do we do to make it pure is by washing it with water. So we continue washing it with water. And then if you want to add anything, maybe flavors, you can go ahead and add in this case. And But how can we be able to test that the water that we have, the oil that we have extracted is actually oil. So we usually smear it on a paper. If you smear the product and it leaves a translucent patch, it tells us that whatever that we have extracted is oil. So this is how you see that and test that the product that you've gotten is oil. So we said that uh, this solvent extraction is used to extract oil. What are some of other applications that can be used? So other applications that can be used, we have the extraction of natural dyes from plants. Uh, there is also extraction of herbal medicines from plants, extraction of caffeine from tea or coffee, and it is also used in the dry cleaning to remove dirt. So these are other ways or other places this method can be used in our daily life. Next, we are going to look at a question in regards to what we have discussed. And the question for today is describe an experimental procedure that can be used to extract oil from nuts. So we are going to look at the step-by-step -step, uh, experiment. So we are extracting oil from nut seeds. So the first step will be we are going to put uh, nut seeds in a mortar and crush with a pestle. Next, as you continue crushing, we add propanone. So we add propanone as we continue crushing. So when we do that, we, form, we will form a solution. So what do we do to separate the big chance from the solution? We decant the resultant solution to, into an evaporating dish. Next, we leave the solution or resulting solution in the sun to evaporate the propanol, leaving the oil in the evaporating dish. And that brings us to the end of the experiment. If you're asked um, to test the product that you've uh, acquired from this uh, process, we say that you apply the product on a paper. If it becomes translucent, then the product is oil. So next, you're going to look at the next question. A student crushed seeds and then added propanone Propane, so propane is also another alternative to propanone instead of water to extract oil from castor oils. Why did he use prop propane instead of water and why were the seeds first crushed? So we use propane instead of water 
because it dissolves the oil or it's soluble with the oil. So we didn't use the water because water is insoluble in oil. And then the next question is why were the seeds first crushed? We crushed the seeds first to increase the surface area to allow the, the solvent to uh, come in contact with the oil. And that brings us to the end of the questions and also the end of what we have been discussing. I hope you have been able to understand the procedure and why the procedure goes the way it goes and you can be able to explain comfortably. So next we are going to look at a different method. So see you in the next lesson.